All right, this video is gonna be a little bit longer. This is about the assignments link in the white menu. Assignments you can do a lot with. This is an example of how an assignments page can look. So when you click on assignments, you can organize your assignments by topic, by date, by anything. That's totally up to you. Um, I tried to get mine by date or by topic. Um, this is an old assignment, um, an, old uh, an old course, sorry that I cannot, I can no longer edit, but I can show you what it looks like. So anything that I dealt with design, I was able to put in the design section. Current events, if we did that, would be under current events. Any writing assignments, they did some partner profiles. We had a lot of editing assignments that we did that were not graded, that's why there's so many of them. I had those be a warm-up activity throughout the quarter. They turned in paper tweets. We had a few discussions, and we had some caption writing. So those were the assignments I had within Canvas. Now, let's look at Paper Tweet, for example. Paper Tweet 3 was one they needed to turn in, so if you click on it, you're gonna see where I actually have the directions. I can't edit it, which I'll show you that in a second. So, this is their directions. They had to make sure they're, they turned into something. Um, then, there was a rubric attached to it, and I can show you how to add a rubric. And when I'm ready to grade it, I can click the rubric to get the 10 points. Um, if I needed to, I could download a bunch of submissions and grade them. Um, and so assignments are just really handy. Now let me go to a course that is for this year where I have not created any assignments yet. So go to assignments and what you can do then here is now you've got some more editing options. So it can be for all grading periods. For those who have a class all year, you can actually search based within your quarters, which is really handy. Since I'm quarterly, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can add a group of assignments. You can add an assignment within assignments. Um, and under assignments, you can add an assignment. These two buttons here, this assignment blue plus and this are the exact same thing. So for example, I know my students are going to be working on paper tweets. So I'm going to call them write paper tweets. Now I don't know the percentage of the total grade, but I know a lot of you out there do percentage type things, so that would be very beneficial to you. I'm going to hit save, and there's the subcategory there. To create an assignment, I'm going to have my students, um, if, I'm going to go back to calendar here real quick to see when I'm going to assign this. Since it is still summer, I don't know quite when, so I'm going to go to August. And we start school on the 9th, so I could assign it on the 12th, but I'm not going to. So their first tweet is going to be due on the 19th. So there's two ways you can go about this. I could double click the 19th, go to assignment, click paper tweet 1. It's due on the 19th because that's where I clicked it. And I can put it on whatever class I want to. Since I was Journalism 7, I'm going to click that. It's under assignments or paper tweets. I'm going to put it under paper tweets because I created that group. And then you can go to more options here. And by going to more options, that allows you to edit fully what the assignment will look like. Like this. I can type in my directions. So that's one way to do an assignment. Now I'm going to cancel this and go back to the uh, start. So one way to do an assignment is going through your calendar and then clicking the due date that you would like it to be due. Okay. Another way to get to an assignment, and it's the, it's the same thing, you're just getting to it a little bit differently, is going to your courses, clicking on the course you want, making sure you go down to assignments, and this is the same thing. I'm gonna put a paper tweet in, but instead I could add assignment here, but since I've already created my group, I'm gonna put it here. Uh, so I'm gonna click on that plus sign, and again, the type is an assignment, or it could be discussion or a quiz. An external tool could be a PDF, it could be a, you know, a worksheet, it could be a link, it could be anything, or it could just be not graded. So I actually do want to grade these. So this is paper tweet one, and it's going to be due on the 19th, and this nice little calendar shows up for you, so you can be visual about it. So I'm going to make it to do the 19th. It is going to be worth, I forget how many points, but we'll come back to that. So I'm going to keep it zero for now. Because I can't remember, I'm going to go to more options. And there I go. I'm able to then edit and be more specific with a link, or I can add a table, or images, or math equations, or a video I want them to watch, or a video I can upload. YouTube is, you know, it's linkable, whereas this video means I have it on my H drive. Um, 
I could actually link things with from within my courses as well. So maybe a file's already uploaded in my course, and so I can go to my course files and upload the file there or upload a new file. Maybe I have images I could use, and those will show up. Or I could use Flickr Creative Commons, or I've got links from within my class. So maybe I need them to look at a discussion, and I have them look at discussion one, and I can be like, read discussion one, and write an argument or something. Oops, I spelled argument wrong. Let's spell check. All right, so there are my directions. I linked from within my canvas. So when kids click on this, they're going to be taken to that discussion, which is very cool. So you can even do homeworks from within canvas. Scroll down then. This is where it gets a little more confusing. You have all these options here. How many points do I want it? Maybe I just want it to be 10 points, nothing fancy. It's in my assignment group already. I am a point person, so I'm going to do points, but some of you do letter grades or percentages or complete and incomplete. I'm going to keep with points. I'm going to have it be an online submission, although it could be on paper or no submission. So if you collect it via paper in a folder, you can just actually grade it within Canvas and type in the grades. Uh, I'm going to have it be an online submission. It could be a text entry. And then it's not a group assignment. We'll talk about groups here later. I don't want any peer reviews. I, if you want this to go in the grade, grade book, you always need to post grades to SIS. The SIS is the Student Information System, and that is simply saying that when you grade it, the grade you enter in Canvas syncs up with your grade book, which makes it so much easier. I have found grading within Canvas so wonderful because if I grade from my phone, I grade from my computer, the grade then syncs to my grade book and I don't have to type it in again anywhere else. And so that really does take a step out of grading. I want everyone in my class to see it. However, if you did want only certain kids to have this assignment and differentiate that assignment, you can do that and they won't know, which is really cool. The due date and when it's available from. Now, if you're allowing late work, you can, you know, do that. I wouldn't check any of that and I would just keep the due date. Um, that way you know if it's late, if you're going to take a point or two off for late um, or not. Available from, if I make it available from the 18th to, oh, that's, Ju that's July. Be careful you're in the right month. So if you're planning ahead, just be careful. The 15th through the 19th of August, students will not have access to this after the 19th. So that will lock them out. Um, I'm not going to do that, though. So if you don't want to do that, you just, oops, you just, um, highlight all of it and hit backspace, control A, backspace. Uh, you can add additional things, additional things you want to assign it to if you'd like to. So there's just some students here I need to assign stuff to. I'm going to close out of that. Um, you can always notify users if you're going to update the content. So if you're going to change the assignment. Once you're done, save and publish. Now, if you're not ready to publish it yet so students see it, I would just hit save. So in this case, I'm just going to hit save. Now one more thing I want to show you is you can actually pull an assignment in. So if you go to assignments and you want to add an assignment, I'm going to add a paper tweet. I actually created this already, so I'm going to delete this because I've already created something in the comments, which I've, we've already talked about. So if I go to um, assignment, I hit plus. I'm actually just kidding. Since I've already created an assignment, I've created paper tweets, I'm going to go to comments, and this is where I've saved my paper tweets because it is a weekly assignment and I didn't want to have to type it up over and over and over again. So what I'm going to do is type in paper tweet, which I created for myself. It's private, so only I have access to it. So click on paper tweet. I've got the instructions already typed out. I even have a little image ready to go. I've tagged it with B and tweet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on, this gives me all the classes I want. Since I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm just going to type in your book. Just kidding. Journalism. Oh, there it is. Journalism 7. Check mark. And hit import. Since I do paper tweets with most of my classes, I can do one fell swoop and import this with many classes, which is really cool. So now I'm going to type it in for newspaper because my newspaper kids will do it as well. And I can go to import course. I have successfully imported it. Go me. So if I go back to my course, go to journalism, Go back to my assignments. 
Now it's imported. So since it's imported, I just have to click and drag it up to Paper Tweets. And then I'm going to click on this little S here. That's that post SIS enabled, which means I can move it. It'll be in my gradebook. 10 points, all that good stuff. So if you click on this assignment here, my instructions, I've got a link to the Twitter feed, and I can even add a rubric if I wanted to, and I do have a rubric. So if I just go to find my rubrics, which I've already created, I can actually find them within here. And there's my paper tweet rubric, and I'm going to scroll down and use this rubric because I've already created it, and there it is, 10 points. So my students are ready to turn it in. I have an easy way to grade it. And there it is. It is done. Go back to assignments, and I'm ready to go. So that is one way, actually that's the way to create assignments and add rubrics. If you want to add a rubric to an assignment that uh, you don't have an, uh, a rubric to, um, what you're going to do then is I'm actually going to edit this paper tweet again. I am going to trash this. And what you're going to do is click on plus rubric, name it, and then here you're able to add all the different criteria and the different ratings. So if you have like four points, like four, five, four, three, two, what you're going to do is plus and plus again, and this gives me four places. And what you want to do is put your um, your information to what is a five, what is a three, what is a two. Um, and there you go, create rubric, and that'll create a rubric for you which I'm not going to create that rubric. So rubrics right there, grading, assignments, it's all right there. Um, I'm going to show you what grades look like here in just a minute.